Hey there, welcome to Wine Time. My name is Erin Swain and I am a sommelier and a surfer and I take a laid back approach to wine education. So I am here today to talk about a few wines and help you build your wine vocabulary. So one of the things that helps you sound like a pro is being able to talk the talk and speak the language. And there's a lot of words that sommeliers will use and make up sometimes. So I'm just here to kind of set some things straight and have fun. And today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, which is the nose of wine. And I will talk about a bunch of wine fun facts and I invite you to follow me at Instagram. I am a uh, surfing psalm, so at surfing psalm. DM me on Instagram, tell me what you think, ask me questions, or give me some feedback. I'd love to hear from you and would love to teach you about wine in a really laid back way. So today I am talking about the nose of wine. And I have one white and three reds. And we'll go through kind of what a sommelier does when preparing for a blind tasting and the importance of paying attention to what's in the glass in front of you. Each episode, I will interview a cool person that is either a winemaker, a wine writer, perhaps a chef, someone that's been in the industry forever and just has a different approach and a different perspective and probably a lot more knowledge than I do as a sommelier and can shed some light and fun facts about wine. So we are going to start with wine number one. I have Babbage Sauvignon Blanc. This is coming out of New Zealand. And in fact, at the end of this episode, I will sit down and speak to the CEO, David Babbage, whose family has been making wine in New Zealand for years and years. And they are super cool. He happens to be a surfer and a kiteboarder as well. So we sat down and shared some fun facts. So this is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc is the grape. So it is the variety and we will be doing single varieties for wine one and two and then blends for wines three and four. So when we talk about a single variety, this one is Sauvignon Blanc. You can have grapes such as Pinot Grigio, Pinot Noir, you can have Trebbiano, Vermentino, Nebbiolo from Italy, or you can have classic Cabernets, Cabernet Sauvignons, Petit Verdots, uh, and the like. There's over 5,000 grape varietals, so there's a lot to know about grapes. And Sauvignon Blanc is perhaps, I think, a great everyday wine, and it appeals to a lot of people's palates. So, that being said, this Sauvignon Blanc is a New World wine. It is coming out of New Zealand in Marlborough. And just looking at the color of this wine, I see it's very vibrant. I look at the the quarter rim variation and I'm noticing that um, there's not a lot of difference so that's indicative of age when you're looking at wine and I'll talk a lot about blind tasting because as a sommelier you end up taking a blind tasting course so looking at the wine the appearance of the wine and the nose are very very important just as important as tasting the wine when you are going to evaluate and say what wine is in your glass so the first thing I will do is I will look at the edge of my wine from core to rim and I will notice I think this is youthful wine. It is. This is the 2019 vintage. So the vintage is the year that it was made. Uh, an important thing to note about year is every year is different and that's what makes wine so fun and fascinating for winemakers. We have a lot of different climactic conditions that can change the course of an entire vineyard. It can make yields less or more if you have a very rainy year, if you have a very windy year, if there's frost early on. Unfortunately, this year, Napa Valley had some devastating fires and those things can happen. But vintage is very important to pay attention to in all of your wines. So this is the current release vintage 2019 Sauvignon Blanc. And we're talking about the nose today. So my favorite, when I swirl this wine, and if you're going to swirl your wine, it's a way of aerating it and letting it breathe. So wine is a very alive substance, and it comes more to life when you introduce oxygen. So whether it's swirling it to introduce oxygen or decanting it in a decanter in a fancy restaurant, these are all going to allow the wine to become more expressive and open up and, you know, just be 
show, show more of what it's, what it's capable of and how it changes. So on the nose, this wine is definitely screaming bright citrus fruits. When I say bright citrus fruits, I'm talking lemon, I'm talking lime zest, I'm talking grapefruit, which is very indicative of this region, Marlboro in New Zealand. So these are aromas. The aromas come from the grape variety itself. So in this case, the variety is Sauvignon Blanc, and the aromas are from that grape. So these citrus fruits that I'm getting, and a little bit of that minerality, it's coming from what's happening with the grape. I'm gonna try this one. Mm, excellent. So, when I aerate it, when I make that little sucking in bubble with my mouth, I'm also introducing more oxygen to try to feel what's going on on the palate. And this wine is very, very bright with acid. You get it on the sides of your mouth, like biting into a lemon or a green apple. It elevates the taste buds, and it's a very, very cool and a very, very fun food wine. This Sauvignon Blanc is delicious. It's confirming on the nose what I got on the palate. So I'm getting this grapefruit, I'm getting this lime zest, I'm getting this beautiful lemon, I'm getting a lot of minerality. And it's important to note that this minerality is from the subsoil of where Sauvignon Blanc is grown, and it's also how they age the wine. So when they age this wine, it's in stainless steel. So there's no oxygen getting in, and it's sitting there, and it's fermenting, and it's becoming its wine that it's gonna become while it's aging in stainless steel. So the aromas on this wine, we're getting a lot of fruits. It's coming from the variety itself. And we're gonna move on to the word bouquet now. These are both words that comprise the nose. So a bouquet is part of the nose that comes from vinification, what the winemaker does to the wine after they pick the grape, after it's been crushed, what are they doing and what, are, what do they want this wine to taste like and flavors they want it to impart. So wine number two, I'm gonna move on to 100% Pinot Noir. So this wine is coming out of Burgundy and this is a Premier Cru, it's 2014 from Domaine Henri Gouget. So this is a Burgundy producer in Burgundy they grow primarily for red wines, Pinot Noir. And they also grow a little Gamay, which we'll get to in my Thanksgiving episode, but not right now. Right now, we are in uh, Nuit Saint Georges. It's in the Cote d'Or. The Cote d'Or is the Golden Slope. And Cote just means slope in French. If you speak more languages, you'll be better at your wine knowledge and your wine education in general. So this one is a Premier Cru. This site is coming out of Nuit Saint Georges, and it is the variety. Pinot Noir. So, wine number two, I'm gonna swirl and smell. Oh my gosh, beautiful, beautiful. This one is definitely a little more expressive. Sometimes in red wines, they can have a little more complexity than white wines. And so immediately I'm getting some red fruits here on the nose. I'm getting cranberry, I'm getting cassis. These are aromas I'm getting from this wine. I'm also getting a little bit of bramble and I'm getting hints of vanilla. It's a very subdued vanilla character, and that is what we call a bouquet. That is coming from the oak aging, and they are using French oak. There is a difference between French and American oak, which we will see in wine number three. So this wine, oh my gosh, beautiful. Red fruits, like some pomegranate, little bits of raspberry, ripe cherry, and then those subdued like uh, barnyard characteristics on this Pinot Noir. Again, Pinot Noir is one of those wines. It's a thin-skinned grape, and you can see that because you can see through the wine. When you have a thin-skinned grape variety that you're working with, it can be finicky in the vineyard. It's susceptible to frost, to high winds, to bugs, to things that a thicker skin would protect the inside juice from. So they're a little bit more expensive to produce. So when you're picking out Pinot Noirs, I recommend going up a little bit with your uh, budget because you're gonna see the difference when you when you pick out a wine like a Pinot Noir. You want to spend a little more money on it. So that is our lovely Burgundian Pinot Noir. And I'm going to open wine two and three right now because I want to compare our three reds. Since I have with me a thin skin grape, medium skin grape, and a thick skin grape. 
which will interact with whether it's light body, medium body, or full body. I'm also going to show you how a sommelier would open a bottle. This is super important as well because even if you're entertaining at home, it's a good idea to take these little tips and tricks and anytime you're entertaining, it can just make you look a little bit better, a little more knowledgeable and like the host that you are. So for this wine, I have a Cote du Rhone Village. This is by the family parent and it is from the Cote du Rhone. Cote du Rhone is known for Syrah, Grenache, Mouvedre, famous districts like Chateauneuf du Pape. When you're cutting, you want to cut underneath the second lip and pull the foil right off. So Rhone varietals are beautiful varietals and they are more medium body, so they go really well with a lot of foods. If you are having at the dinner table or you're picking out wines for people and they're chicken on the table, there's someone with a fish dish, someone ordered filet mignon, someone's having ribeye, someone else got octopus and you just don't really know what to pick out, Rhone varietals classic food wines, great for a medium body that everyone will enjoy. You'll see when I'm pulling out the cork, I'll do it really quietly and set that down. So wine number two, this is a more Grenache than it is Syrah, but it is a blend of Grenache and Syrah. So immediately when I pour this wine, I'm noticing the difference in color between wine number two and wine number three, but not a lot. You can actually see through both of these wines, but I do notice a difference in color. One goes from a garnet to more of a ruby color. So then I'm gonna take this Rhone and smell it. Oh my God, awesome, awesome. So on this wine, immediately I am getting some very cool fruit characters. I'm getting a little bit of, a little hint of black cherry. I'm getting cassis and I'm getting like almost a stewed plum. So I'm getting different fruits than I was getting in the Pinot Noir. I'm getting a little bit more stone fruit. I'm getting a little bit more of a dark fruit. Whereas before I talked about pomegranate and cherry and you could see in the color and now I'm going into a little more plum. So when I talk about the fruits, again, they're coming from the variety. This is our aromas that are variety dependent. I am also getting some really cool like tapenade. It's like an olive -y sort of earth driven characteristic. This does come from the earth and the terroir of the Rhone Valley and it is super cool. So these are going to be some bouquets when I talk about that. This has some spice. The spice is a little bit of hints of cinnamon and vanilla and this wine has been barreled in stainless steel and also in oak. When tasting wine, really important if you'd like to do what I did, which is introduce oxygen, it just opens it up, becomes more expressive, and then notice where you're tasting and where things are on the palate. So, for example, you're gonna taste sweet on the front of the palate, you're gonna get acid on the sides. Tannins can come everywhere, sometimes in the middle, sometimes on the side, sometimes in the upper gum. This has light tannins, and it is really nice. So structurally, we have a little bit more body than in our first wine, and that's really, really fun and really cool great food wine and has a little bit of a gaminess to it. So if you are having any kind of a gamey meat, lamb, duck, uh, even a chicken with a mushroom, something with a little more earth driven to it, these Cote de Rhone's are super great and really fun. So it's mostly Grenache, Syrah is blended into it, and that is our wine number two, a very fun wine. For the third wine I wanna talk about on today's episode, I am moving over to a New World wine. So this is the Nyers family. They call it the Left Bank Red. Left Bank, this is a nod to where these grapes came from, which are Bordeaux. And in Bordeaux, they grow five main grapes. They grow Cabernet, Cabernet uh, Franc, well Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot, and they also grow Malbec. So those are the five big Bordeaux varietals. If you see them growing them in other places, for example, Mendoza and Argentina, they do a great job with Malbec. And this is Napa Valley. It's New World, but they're called it the Left Bank. So there's a river that runs through Bordeaux. It's called the Medoc. On the left side, they primarily grow Cabernet. Right side, they grow more Merlot, but they grow these varietals. And this is a little nod to where it's from. So it's very cool. This is coming out of Napa Valley. 
and this family has been making wine since 1992. They received awards in 2001 for one of the best winemakers, I think, by wine enthusiasts, so super cool. Again, notice when I'm holding the bottle, I'm always going to keep the label face forward. I'm gonna cut down at the bottom, and you're gonna try to cut in the front, swing your hand around back, cut to the back, and then pull the foil off very nicely. When I do this with my restaurant students all the time, but when you're going to put your corkscrew in, you want the little tip of the corkscrew to face you, and so you'll get that right in. Don't be afraid to push that in, and then slowly start winding down until you find where you can have a conversation and the label can stay out. Slowly just pull up on your little lever here, and voila, beautifully opened bottle of wine. So this is wine number four. I'm gonna pour it in the glass here. Already, very cool. I like to compare the red wines and look at the color difference. So we have Pinot Noir, we have Grenache Syrah, and now we have Cabernet. So the Cabernet is definitely a darker color. When I look at the quarter rim, already I'm seeing definitely a deeper, darker purple expressions ruby. It has a thin watery rim, and it doesn't have a lot of quarter rim variation, which is usually indicative of age, so I believe this is a younger vintage, 2016. So we have just a couple years of age on this wine. So we're gonna swirl that wine and smell, oh my gosh. Immediately I get a lot of bright fruit. When you get bright fruit, it's really fun. Think about Napa Valley, think about that sunshine, the California raisins. These fruits, these grapes get really, really ripe and that's so great for making fruit forward wines. And it's a little different than what they make in Bordeaux. Bordeaux can be very earth driven and I'll talk about this in a future episode, but for this one, oh my gosh. I'm gonna talk about the aromas. The aromas I'm getting, black cherry, I'm getting cassis, Oh my gosh, I'm getting, I'm getting dark plum, I'm getting stewed plum. And then I'm gonna talk about the bouquets. On this wine, I am getting vanilla, dill, and coconut. Vanilla, dill, and coconut are definitely implicit of American oak and oak aging. Especially in Napa Valley, that's what they do. need to give that a minute. This wine has the most length. That means once it dissipates from your palate, pay attention to how long it's staying on there. And that has to do with a little bit of alcohol, but also with the tannin structure. This wine has some really soft velvety tannins, not too stringent. I think that this wine could age a little longer, but it's really beautiful and it would go with a different style of food. So whereas this one I talked about game and duck and a chicken with mushrooms. Now here I'm having a little more full bodied and a, and a more tannins to cut through so we can have something a little fattier. These wines and Cabernets in general go great with red meat, um, blue cheeses, things that are strong, things that would go well with this wine. So this is a very fun wine that is a great food wine and I believe, oh my gosh, would be fun just to drink outside in a chillier weather. It's getting colder here in Montauk. Time for red wine season. And this has a beautiful, beautiful plum, dark fruit, cassis, oh my gosh. All right, so we've talked a little bit about some new wine words, about the nose. These all have beautiful noses on the nose. It's comprised of aromas and bouquets. They are different and one takes place from the variety, one takes place from what's happening after vinification and what the winemaker's doing. If they're introducing malolactic, if they are putting certain yeasts in there, if they're aging it longer, uh, reserving it in oak and other things. So those elements are the bouquets of the, of the wine. But both parts are comprising the nose, one of the most beautiful aromatic things that happen in wine, and it's very cool and very fun. So that is what I want you to take home with you today, is learning those two words and building your wine vocabulary. Real quick, in every episode, I think it would be fun to talk about fruit character. So 
it's important and I would, I, I would encourage you to go to farmer's markets when you're cooking, break things off, taste them, touch them, see what's going on in your own markets and in your own cooking and cuisine and what's growing around because that will increase your wine vocabulary in a major way, but it also turns you on to new things and fun things. With that being said, I brought a few fun fruits and if you wanna talk like a sommelier, Fruit character is real important because if you say something tastes like cherry or smells like plums, that's great. But you could say, oh, it smells like underripe plums or overripe plums or stewed plums or cooked plums or a plum jam. So that being said, I brought a couple fun fruits with me today. Just wanted to show you a few of them before we cut to my interview with David Babich. So this is fruit number one. These are called ground cherries. These are really reminiscent of gooseberries which are known for a flavor in Sauvignon Blanc in the Loire Valley. So I just kind of wanted to show you what these look like. It's a little tomatillo husk, and when you break off the fruit, it almost looks like a little grape, but it tastes tangy. It tastes like an apricot meets a tomato. Really, really fun, really cool. They have fun husks. I'm not sure which wine this would identify with. Probably something coming out of Alsace, but just so you know, that's a ground cherry. Very, very fun. I also have this fruit with me today. This fruit is, does anyone know? It is a passion fruit. And passion fruits, I didn't know, can be kind of crazy. This is what passion fruit looks like on the inside. Passion fruits are tropical fruits. They're super acidic and they're super sweet. So when you eat the inside flesh of a passion fruit, you'll notice right away that tangy zip. It's not quite like a lemon, but you are getting that acid and it's super fun. So definitely check out your farmer's markets for some fruits. And the third fruit I wanted to show you today is a raw date. So when we buy dates in America, typically they're dried or they are fresh and you can make really fun things with them. They're very, very sugary, very, very syrupy. But these raw dates, when you cut them open, they have this really cool flesh on the outside. It's like eating something that's underripe. Very, very sweet and very, very cool. So dates are something that will come up in a red wine, but if it's a raw date, this might be something that you taste and decide one of your tropical fruits or wines tastes like it. So go to your farmer's markets, check things out, We'll talk about fruit character so that you can keep building your wine vocabulary. And today's special guest, I would like to roll to a footage interview with David Babich from New Zealand. Him and I sat down and got to talk a little bit about wine and waves and his journey in the wine world. Check it out. Hey there, Aaron Swain. I am here with a very special guest. This is David Babich from New Zealand and he makes, oh, his wine is in my wetsuit. Babbage Sauvignon Blanc. So David, um, how did you get into wine? Well, actually my uh, grandfather had the good foresight to start a winery back in 1916. So he traveled out from Croatia, 14 years old, leaves home, goes to Croatia, and uh, when he's 16 he plants at a vineyard, and when he's 19 he starts making wine uh, in New Zealand. So oh, yeah. um, that's the start of our winery, and uh, 103 years later, here we are. Very, very, very yeah. cool. Um, why did you study, what did you study in wine and why? So I studied um, winemaking and viticulture. Um, I what is up, viticulture? We so gotta... viticulture is grape growing and uh, obviously the winemaking is the winemaking. Uh, and the two are so related. If we're making Sauvignon, it's all about the quality of the grapes that you, you grow that make the wine. So you can't make good wine out of bad grapes. So, so much of the focus is, uh, is grape growing. All right. Yeah. Now, um, is Sauvignon Blanc the most successful varietal? Yeah, really it is. Um, Sauvignon put New Zealand wine on the international map. We are known for um, our Sauvignons and lead the category. Yep. Uh, in fact, in the USA, New Zealand is now the third largest uh, importer of wine by value into the USA, after Italy and France. Super and so cool. the first um, New World wine importer. All right, when did you start growing your Chardonnay? Oh, Chardonnay's a long time for us, maybe in the 60s. All right. So more than um, 
50 or 60, uh, yeah, 50 or 60 years of Chardonnay. And for your Chardonnay, are you stainless steel all the time, or are you No, we them? do a range of um, Chardonnays, some at the very premium end, a barrel fermented under refrigeration, okay. and uh, with all of the uh, winemaking inputs there. And at the sort of easy drinking end uh, is this wine, our Hawke's Bay Chardonnay, no oak, so no barrel work and, and no malolactic ferment, just a pure expression of Chardonnay great variety of characters. And what kind of wines are your favorite to drink on the beach in particular? Well, I, I always love Sauvignon. It's so clean and fresh, and it's a real summer wine. Uh, although, admittedly, people drink, drink Sauvignon year-round, So, uh, but it is a great beach wine. I also like Rosé. We make a Pinot Noir Rosé, okay. and that's fantastic. It's a uh, um, great Great fruit characters and really well balanced, dry finish. Okay. And it's a fun wine. Now, you are a pretty avid surfer and kiteboarder. Yep. With your job, how yep. often do you get to enjoy those activities? Um, not enough. Really Never. not enough. <laughs> Never enough. <laughs> but um, the kite surfing, I would try to get out um, most weekends, uh, at least for one session. And the surfing is. Uh, is more difficult, so I will surf a lot over the summer holidays, like every day in the summer holidays. But um, during work time, it, it gets more intermittent. Yeah. It's uh, it's opportunistic at best. All right. Yeah. And what uh, is the future of Babbage looking like? Are you all looking at different properties? Are you going to buy grapes from where else? Are you going to keep it to New Zealand? What is the future of Babbage? I think we just we keep we keep expanding with demand. Um, we're continuing to grow um, we have great demand for these wines and um, in fact I went unconditional on another vineyard uh, yesterday uh, actually two days ago it was Friday and um, so we picked up another what 30 hectares which is 75 canopy acres of, uh, of mainly Sauvignon with a bit of Pinot Noir so we keep buying vineyards and growing our production and people keep wanting the wine so that all works out. That's because it's yeah. freaking delicious. <laughs> so cheers, and next time I see cheers, you, Aaron. it will be in New Zealand. In New Zealand. <laughs> Here's to that. <laughs> all right, thanks for checking out my interview with David Babich. He is super cool. I hope to visit him in New Zealand. He's going to show me some great kiteboarding spots, show me some great vineyards, great wineries, and that will be a very, very, very fun trip. Until next time, this is Wine Time. Thank you for tuning in. Please watch next episode. I'm gonna be breaking down the components of wine and talking about fruit, tannin, alcohol, and acid. So you'll learn four more wine vocabulary words. To check out Wine Time next time, I'm Erin Swain. Cheers. Mm -hmm.